Hello. Uh, before I start this video, first thing I'd like to say is thank you to all the Patreon people who have thrown in the odd dollar here and there. And I've uh, put it all together and I've purchased this. It's a Roland D50, uh, the linear synthesizer or the LAS type thing. Uh, Yes, it's in fantastic condition and it came with the programmer as well, which makes it a lot easier to sort of program this thing on the fly, if you wish. And uh, it's got some fantastic sounds in it. The great thing about this is all the Jean-Michel Jarre sounds that you can freely download off the internet from lots of different people who have done some really, really good sounds for this. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration. Now, believe it or not, even though this is in great condition, it does have a problem. The modulation wheel just stays wherever you push it. It won't spring back together and it's quite stiff. So I'm wondering if the spring is missing or broken or something. It does actually work, the bender, but when you bend the note, it stays there. You have to pull it back and get it back in the center. So that's a good excuse to open it up and actually get it fixed. But uh, I'll give you a little demo of why people keep buying these things. This is 29 years old. It came out in 1987, I believe, and went up to about 1990 before it stopped. So uh, anyway, here's some of the sounds. Recognizable? There you go, I've just sampled that. Right, so if I play that back, and go on to the next instrument, but I'm not going to demonstrate this to you. All I'm going to do is open it up, have a look at this modulation pitch bender, see if I can sort that out, have a look around inside and see what sort of technology is inside here, uh, because it's, it's 30 years old. So this is, uh, to me, I've always wanted one of these, and I was lucky enough that this just kind of appeared at the right time when I was wondering on what to spend your Patreon money on. And there you go, I bought this with it. So thanks a lot to all you guys out there who has thrown the odd dollar in now and again. It's going to good use and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anyway, shut up now, uh, get the screwdriver out. I'm going to open this up. We'll have a look round inside and uh, maybe I can tell you a little bit of history that I do know about this as we go along. Here goes screwdriver time so as you can see it's in amazingly good condition and uh, this is well this is a lot more rarer than the actual synthesizer is because this was quite expensive to buy and this was basically the programmer so you didn't need this I mean you could program the entire machine through all the buttons and using the joystick to actually enter values and things so you could sort out all the structures and make your own tones up basically but this just made it Oh, so much quicker. So I'm really pleased to have gotten this with it. But anyway, uh, apart from, say, this modulation, which is actually quite stiff, and I'm frightened of breaking it because there's a lot of force on there. Other than that, everything is, wow. I mean, it doesn't even look as if it's a year old, and yet it's almost 30 years old. So I'm going to switch off, unplug it, and flip it over and uh, get inside this beautiful vintage synthesizer. Right, so many screws to choose from. Uh, I think I'll just go for the ones on the ends first. Aha, we're in, excellent. Now this section here, which is the main board, is what you find in the D550. The D550 was the rack mount version of this. And that's exactly, I'm sure that's exactly the same piece that's in the D550. And all the rest of this is for the display and buttons and the keyboard, of course. So I really want to get down here. So I'm going to move this thing around. So it looks like I'm going to have to take this side off here. 
which looks easy enough anyway so let me just get rid of that get that out of the way come on ah haha -ha. right okay we'll just lift it out hmm very nice and now I can get this out okay remember the yellow to the left I mean normally you can't put these in the wrong way around anyway because there's two little ridges or there'll be something to key it in the correct way but I always just double check just in case because they haven't always got a keying on the actual plug so I'm assuming if I just undo these four here then this unit should come out hopefully haha -ha, thank you Uh, well it has got its spring in place here so the springs there oh look at that oh come on it's sort of it's loosening off now I don't believe that well that was an easy fix wasn't it well I thought that fix was a little bit too easy really suddenly you take this out and it's free to move but what I've just realized is okay it's free to move it moves left and right easy enough and springs back into the center but if you look at this piece here now this is the end of the potentiometer now when I turn this that's staying in the same place it's not turning the potentiometer at all because if I turn it with a screwdriver like so it's really really stiff so the potentiometer is stiff. Now, if I tighten this, so this must have loosened up a little bit. There's a little grub screw in the top here and that sort of bites onto the potentiometer. So if I tighten that up now and I move the bender, it stays in place again. So the actual potentiometer for some reason is really, really stiff, but it's turning it now. So it would work uh, and bend the note, but this won't go back into place so it looks like what I've got to do is actually take this potentiometer out you see now it'll move freely but this potentiometer stays in the same place it doesn't move so I'm gonna to have to take the potentiometer out and try and figure out why it is so stiff basically all you're having here is a potentiometer to sort of do your pitch bend and just here there's a kind of resistive strip again the similar sort of thing that runs underneath the keys for aftertouch but when you push this up this piece pushes against that and that's changing the uh, modulation so right I'll open this up uh, and get the potentiometer out of there and see well hopefully find out why it's so stiff so get that spring off first and that spring is just to bring the modulation back to the center right oh this is like one of those clever puzzles how do you get it out or how did they even put it in there okay Roland what are you doing here get those wires up and over there ah there you go right so there's the potentiometer now that's a strange one I've never seen this sort of uh, extra pin on one end before take this off try not to lose the spring I put that that way so that spring goes on next and let me take this pot off it might just be that it needs re-greasing or something with any luck yeah that is really really stiff the chances are though I won't have a potentiometer like that because I've never seen a potentiometer with this extra pin at one side before I mean what is that doing hmm interesting now when this is assembled this bar gets put in this way and then that piece gets put on the back and then it's punched on the back there hold it up to the camera it's sort of punched there so that uh, splays outwards and holds all this together so there's no chance I can undo that uh, right the only thing I can 
possibly figure out is that whatever's making it so tight is the grease has given away underneath here. So let me find something to try and spray down there and try and loosen it up a little bit. Right, this is just a Cook's flame, Cook's torch if you like, and I'm just going to just warm this only gently. The top of the post there, nothing below. And that, if I just get that a little bit warm, that should also loosen the grease off a little bit so that if there is a bit of crap or crud inside the grease, I might be able to, you see that's moving really easily now, just two fingers. Trouble is when it cools down, it will start to stiffen up again. But hopefully if there's a little bit of crap stuck in there that's stopping this from moving, I might be able to get it out of the way, move it a little bit. So I'll just keep on doing that until it cools down. Ouch. Right, let's try and put it back together and see what happens. So that little nipple has to go through that hole, so that goes in there. Hopefully, it might, if you're lucky, have loosened it. So that's a, it's about dead centre. Get that on there. See what happens. Right. So that's moving freely. But when it cools down, it might stiffen up again. But for the time being, it is actually turning. If you look at the uh, that piece here, it's moving it. So that's uh, actually turning the potentiometer now. So whether that will still work when it's actually cooled down, I'm not too sure. But I might have been lucky and I might have just loosened off something there, hopefully. Right. Uh, can't remember how this went. The, the wires went underneath there, and this bit sort of. Oh, well, it's easier to put together than it was to take it apart. Right, modulation. Yeah, springs back, and that moves. Good. Uh, try and put this back together again now, and see if it's going to work. To be honest with you, I can't remember the last time I used a pitch bender. I'm not really one of those players who sort of uses it for some strange reason. But anyway, if it's there, it's got to work. So what I like about this is the keyboard is really nice and uh, it has all these weights glued into the bottom of the keys to give them a little bit of weight. I guess it's sort of semi-weighted. Hmm. Uh, this board here is your keying matrix. So as the keys are pressed down, it goes through all these diodes and things and it works out a kind of a matrix. So it figures out what keys you're pressing. And then that goes off to the main board here. And down here, this is a resistive strip. So when you press the key and then you give it a bit more push, it changes the resistance on here. So it's kind of aftertouch type of sensor. Not sure what that board is there. I haven't got a clue. Uh, over here in the power supply, I've noticed the transformer here has several taps on it. These are called taps. So depending on if this is staying in Japan or going to America or Europe, or other places, you see that it says 220, 240, 120, 110, and you can just unsolder this and move it along the pins, depending on where you're going to be using this, of course. 
So there you go. This one's set up for 240 volts for the UK. Now this is the back of all the switches. Nothing too exciting there. Just another matrix of push buttons. And here is the display with the Oki chips on the back. It's probably a sharp display, but I'm not too sure about that either. But anyway, basically, there you go. This main board is the D50 and D550 main board. So this is the actual board that goes into the rack mount version of the D50, same board. I didn't actually see that on there earlier. But anyway, uh, quick run through of what's going off on here. There's your CR2032 battery. That's for your uh, backup. Now, in the past, I've changed these batteries, but I've switched on the actual synthesizer so it's powered up and then I've taken out the battery and put a new one in and it saved all its settings. It hasn't lost its settings because the actual item is powered up. It doesn't always work but uh, majority of the time it does and if you do that just make sure you don't sort of go touching on the board while the thing is actually powered up. Uh, other than that the chips on here these are gate arrays this is PCM ROM. Uh, this is the LA32, which is the LA synthesis chip, which was especially designed, I believe, for the D50 and D550. Uh, what we got here? NECD 78312G. That's kind of uh, that's like the CPU, uh, the main CPU for this system. This is tone RAM. This is working RAM, and this is program ROM. Now here is reverb and chorus because they're, they're all digital effects in this machine. Uh, here PCM54HP, BB is Burr Brown and that's a 16-bit digital to analog converter in there. Uh, here is a bit of RAM and a bit of memory down here. Now back in the day when this came out memory was really expensive so they had to very carefully use the memory very wisely just to keep the expense down on building something like this. Okay now you can buy memory for next to nothing and you can have these wonderful uh, synthesizers with massive wavetables and things in them because you've got tons of memory. But back in the day memory was very very expensive so I'm not actually sure even what size memory these are but uh, that's basically yeah there you go that is the d50 synth the main thing and the d550 of course now this card here is basically the normal sort of patch data rom for the d50 this is the basic sounds that comes with it so because i've put those jean-michel jar sounds in here i would need to have that card in as well if i wanted to access the original sounds that are in here but you can't write to that one. You can buy these memory cards that you can write to, but that one you can't. That's only a ROM, read-only memory. So, let's see, fingers crossed, if this is going to work. Uh... <laughs> seems to work. So I know that was kind of just a, well, hopefully it was an easy fix, but it didn't turn out to be an easy fix in the end. But uh, if you find that interesting, please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you can. And I've got plenty more of this sort of stuff on the way soon. So thanks very much for watching. All the best. Goodbye.